Configuring a crypto hardware wallet used to be a little hard. This is why I was surprised to discover that you can configure a Trezor Model T in less than 10 minutes. In this video, you will see a step-by-step -step guide for configuring a Trezor Model T on a MacBook Pro. And you will see how easy it is and why, but also what issues I have encountered and how I managed to solve them. So let's begin. First of all, a few things about Trezor Model T. This is the second and the newest crypto hardware wallet from Satoshi Labs. It has a beautiful design, a touch screen, and it costs 181 euros. On Trezor Model T, you can store all largely known digital assets and a few hundreds of little known cryptocurrencies. And I believe it is very important to mention that the Trezor team is working in adding new digital assets to this list. Like all the other offline wallets, it safely keeps your private key far from cyber attacks. It is easy to configure and use, and you'll see details, and the users benefit from great customer support. It can also serve as U2F hardware token. U2F states for universal second factor, and it is an open standard that simplifies and strengthens two-factor authentication. When dealing with sensitive information online, you should always consider activating a second option for validating your operations. But what's in the package? I found Trezor Model T quite stylish. The device itself has a seal and you know no one else has opened the package before you. We've got some stickers that are nice but not very useful, a cable which is um, USB Type-C and this is great, two recovery key cards, make sure they're empty, and the getting started guide, make sure to read it, is very, very short. If Trezor One has a lanyard, Trezor Model T comes with a magnetic dock that you can stick everywhere. Now, let's see how to configure a Trezor Model T on a MacBook Pro. First of all, you have to know that I love Apple products and their operating system for the great user experience they provide. Why did I mention it? Because I wanted to configure my Trezor Model T with Safari Browser. I connected the device to my laptop and opened start.trezor.io as indicated on the device. And guess what? browser was not supported. So I just opened a Google Chrome page. Similar to Windows, uh, the first time the device does not seem available. At the bottom of the page they mention Trezor Bridge. This is a small script that you need to run on your computer. The download page will automatically detect your operating system and offers you the suitable installation kit. All you have to do is to download and run that script. After that, you have to refresh the page and the device becomes available. The best security measure that you can take as a regular user is to have all your operating systems up to date. So the first thing to do when configuring your Trezor Model T is to update the firmware. What happened to me is that I accidentally removed the device while making this update. I was sort of worried, but I just unplugged the device and plugged it again and everything was fine. With Trezor Model T, you have two possibilities to create a wallet. The first is the classical one with one single recovery phrase that has 12 words. If your device is lost, damaged or wiped, you can restore it on another device using this recovery key. The second option is to generate a wallet using Shamir Backup. This allows you to generate up to 16 recovery shares uh, that you can spread in many places. Then you set a minimum number of shares needed to recover your wallet. For example, you can make 10 recovery shares that you can place in 10 different places. Then you set your device to recover uh, using a minimum of four of those 10 recovery shares. This means that if someone has access to one, two, or even three of your shares, they won't be able to steal your funds, to restore your device. Which one to choose? Well, the one that seems more appealing to you. There is not one that is uh, recommended or far more secure. For this tutorial, I will go with the first option. As you might imagine, the next very important thing is to create a backup of your recovery key. Before moving to that, you will see a warning regarding some common sense security rules. Don't forget that you have full control over your funds stored on a Trezor device. So here are a few things that you should pay attention to. Your recovery seed will be displayed just on your device, so write it down carefully. Don't make digital copies of your recovery key and don't send it on the internet. No encryption is sure enough for your recovery key, so never make digital copies of it 
and never send it by email, chat apps, messenger, uh, cloud services or any other digital option. Just keep it in a safe place. You have to click that you read and understood the rules and you can move on. As you do that, the first three words of your recovery key appear on the device screen. Write them down carefully before you swipe up and move to the next. Remember that you cannot go back and see the first word as you move to the next. As you finish the writing of the recovery key, you also need to verify that you did it correctly. You are asked to confirm three random words from your recovery key. If you plan to use your device in a long time, I advise you to restore the wallet using the recovery key. Just pretend that that's a new device and you restore your old wallet on it. Do that before sending funds and this way you ensure that you have written the recovery key correctly and uh, that your funds are safe uh, no matter what. Next, you have to set the pin to unlock your device. If Trezor 1 impressed me with the simple method they use, on Trezor Model T things are even simpler. All you have to do is set a pin on the touch screen, like on your phone. Of course, the buttons are a lot smaller. If they are too small and that's uncomfortable, then you can use a touch screen pad. You also need to confirm the pin you have chosen and all done. Remember this pin or even better, write it down. If you lose or don't remember it, then you'll have to restore your wallet from your recovery key. And why do that when you can just write down the PIN? The next option is to name your device and this is also available on Trezor One. You can choose a name for that. You introduce the name from the browser and you confirm it from the device. This is the first information related to your Trezor device that you introduce from your keyboard. The name of your device is not sensitive data, so there is no danger in keeping it uh, digital on your computer and introducing it from your keyboard. The next step is to bookmark the Trezor Wallet official page. This is a good habit for all important and sensitive web pages that you use. Another example in the crypto space is my Ether Wallet or any exchange that you can think of. Also, if you have a Trezor device, I encourage you to subscribe to their newsletter. You won't receive a lot of emails and some news can be really useful. Now, how do we receive and send cryptocurrencies on a Trezor Model T? In the right corner, you will see all the available coins for this too. Well, I said there were more than a thousand digital assets available and in this list there are like 20. What's the matter? This question is legitimate, but take into consideration that many uh, digital assets are Ethereum-based tokens. And with the Trezor Wallet, you manage Ethereum and Ethereum-based tokens with my Ether Wallet. Also, there are a few other wallets that you have to manage outside this interface. For example, Cardano is managed with Adelite, uh, and that's quite easy to use. Eros has also its own management tool. Take into consideration that this outside wallet management is not for Trezor only. All hardware wallets have the same approach. But most of the coins in this list can be managed with the Trezor official tool. As you select the coin and go to receive, you will be able to see the coin's address or generate a new one. Send the funds to the wallet and all done. Attention, be very, very careful when sending a cryptocurrency to its specific wallet. In other words, don't send Bitcoin to a Litecoin wallet as this will result in a fund loss. You also have the option to buy Bitcoin with fiat and swap cryptocurrencies. These are the newest features that Trezor uh, has introduced and you have to know that these are done using third parties. Actually, if you go for these options, uh, you will see the list of third parties available according to your country. These options are super easy to use as they are sort of all-in-one. At the same time, have a look at the fees before you proceed. Before I end this video, I want to briefly go through the differences between Trezor 1 and Trezor Model T. First of all, supported coins. In my opinion, this is the most important aspect. On Trezor Model 1, you don't have support for certain uh, largely known digital assets. Next, user experience. To my surprise, there is no huge difference between these two uh, models regarding user experience. You have to know that Trezor 1 impressed me uh, since the very first years. And Trezor Model T is just the upgrade. Of course, the touch screen is nice, but you have to take into consideration that I have some small fingers. I can't imagine a massive uh, guy with some big fingers using it extremely, extremely easy. But you can always use a pan dedicated to touch screen that works really well. 
Another difference is the cable. Trezor One has a very small cable, the other one is longer. Uh, Trezor One has a micro USB, old. The other one is Type C, which is great. In terms of recovery keys, with Trezor Model T, you have the possibility to generate a Shamir backup, as mentioned earlier. Of course, you also have available the first option, the classical 12 word recovery key. With Trezor One, you have just one option, a 24 words recovery key. And what I like about Trezor Model T and didn't really like about Trezor One uh, is the verification process of the recovery key. With Trezor Model T, uh, there is a short verification, just three words out of 12. With Trezor One, you have to verify all 24 words, which takes a little longer. And as already mentioned, I'm a little maniac with, um, with security. So I always restore my wallet before sending any funds to it. So this way I ensure that I correctly know the recovery key. So um, that verification process was a little annoying with Trezor One, but of course it's not something huge. Next, the price. There is a big difference in the prices for these devices. But if this is not a problem for you, then I highly encourage you to try a Trezor Model T. In terms of security, delivery time, customer support, these are the same for both Trezor wallets. They also make constant updates for both of them and add new digital assets. As mentioned, if you don't really care about the price, I highly encourage you to take a Trezor Model T. It is a little more stylish, it has that touch screen that is something nice to have and it supports more cryptocurrencies. If you want to spend less, just go with a Trezor One. But remember that it is very important to safely store your digital assets. I have mentioned several times in this video that I found the configuration process of Trezor Model T very easy and that this was a sort of surprise for me. Why is that? Well, because a hardware wallet is like your private bank that you totally control and you also have full responsibility for it. Managing your bank account cannot be as easy as, I don't know, creating an Instagram account. It can't be a two clicks only. But configuring and using a Trezor Model T on a MacBook Pro was very easy and uh, very intuitive. You would be able to do that in less than 10 minutes even if you make three verifications of your recovery key. So this is all for today, I really hope the information here was useful for you and if so, please give me a big thumbs up so I know you have enjoyed it. Share the video with your friends so many people find out about the crypto space and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already. Also on my website you'll find a lot of other useful information from the crypto space and if you subscribe to my newsletter, every Monday you will receive an email with the most important news from the previous week. So take into consideration that too. I'm Christina, thank you for watching, see you next time.